Breaking tonight, exactly two months until America elects the next president. And brand new polls out late today show this race getting tighter in some of the most critical battleground states. Good evening and welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. Hours ago, one of the nation's most trusted pollsters releasing new surveys from four key states. And things are in play. Tonight, Donald Trump on the campaign trail, making his second visit this week to Ohio, talking education in Cleveland. The Quinnipiac University poll telling us why he's there. It is a dead heat. Clinton at 45 percent, Trump at 46. Mrs. Clinton's four-point lead from early August disappearing. And in Florida, it is also tied with both candidates at 47 percent. In North Carolina, Clinton is ahead by four points, just outside the margin of error. That's the first time Quinnipiac is polled in that state. And in Pennsylvania, the most dramatic change. Clinton's lead now cut in half, down from 10 points in August to five points today. Now she's ahead 48 percent to Trump's 43. So what does it tell us? Chris Steyerwalt is our Fox News digital politics editor, and Moa Leafy is the founding executive director of the Georgetown University Institute of Politics and Public Service. Great to see you both. Steyerwalt, how do you see it? Well, first of all, thank God that we have polls. We've lived in this, this wasteland of garbage internet polls, and finally we have real polling, so I'm excited. <laughs> um, the, uh, You're and a poll so, snob. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm such a poll snob, but the truth is, this is really important because it tells us the shape of the race is changed. And it changed from where Trump was getting blown out after the conventions to now he's back in a tie in the two states, of course, that every Republican has to win, Florida and Ohio. Uh, Pennsylvania wasn't ever really going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen unless Donald Trump turns this around and becomes some wave election for him. But I don't, I don't see Pennsylvania in the running. But it's North Carolina that ought to worry him. Because given the fact that he's got a problem in Colorado and Virginia and other states to put together the Republican map. If he can't win in North Carolina, he's got big problems. They've been spending a lot of time there. They're going to spend a lot more. He needs North Carolina. Needs it. Uh, Mo, how do you see it? Because, you know, her, some of her supporters got, got nervous when they saw that, and some of his got very happy. Well, and I say this as a former Hillary Clinton staffer, uh, we should be nervous, right? I mean, you, you don't want to be complacent at this point, and these polls kind of show why, and we've seen other state polls in the past week that do as well. Uh, what's really interesting, there were two different organizations that did 50 state polls uh, in the past week. Washington Post, Survey Monkey did one of the most extensive ones I've seen. And they show something similar, that in a lot of these states that you just talked about, it, the race is, is tight and within the margin of error. But what's really interesting to me is you're seeing the number of battle of traditional battleground states shrink. Chris just talked about Virginia and Colorado, which have become perennial battleground states. She's doing fairly well in those states outside mm -hmm. the margin of error. The number of traditionally red states that have become battleground states is increasingly worrisome, I would Georgia. think, to the Trump campaign. Georgia's dead even. Arizona is within the margin of error. There's no it's it, it shouldn't surprise anyone that Donald Trump chose to give that big immigration speech in Phoenix and the next day Hillary Clinton's campaign went on the air there. Something's happening. They're seeing something in the numbers in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, if you look at the, the full landscape of all 50 states and the polling and the election were held today, she would win fairly comfortably in the Electoral College. So I, I do think there's something to worry about there for the Trump campaign. All right. So what do you think is the conventional wisdom right now, Chris? Is it that it's hers to lose and he needs a huge event, huge event to turn it around? Huge. Like, does he have to go into those debates and just go for broke? Or does he have to just sort of slow and steady, slow and steady, be a statesman, don't say anything crazy, and somehow hope the, you know, the sort of missing Trump voters that his campaign has suggested are out there show up on November 8th? Uh, no, he he needs the contour of the race to change. Uh, uh, while I would throw the Survey Monkey polls out on their ear and all of that Snob. other garbage, a total uh, deserve. But in that case, deserved. I want polls in Maine. I want polls in New Hampshire. I want polls where all of these white people are living and voting. Uh, I want to know: Is Donald Trump competitive in Minnesota? Is he competitive in Maine? Is he competitive in New Hampshire? If that's the case, Mo's right. We could be looking at a changed map. But if we're not, then we're looking at a race where Donald Trump has trailed all along. He's closer now, but he still needs the structure of the race to be changed in order to win. And that's the reality for him. Now, Mo, I get that she has this, this better ground game than Trump. Mm -hmm. Everybody says that on both sides of the aisle. But he is tightening this. I mean, it's getting tighter. And the question is, 
why and whether in the next two months it could get so tight that the positions reverse and he and he well, he's mm -hmm. over yeah, well, I wonder how much it's really tightening or how much it's just really settling, right? I mean, both campaigns got little bumps coming out of their conventions, and that's natural and normal, and that always happens, and it usually settles. You know, we are sort of a 50-50 country, or maybe maybe more accurately a 40-40 country, right? Whoever's got the D starts with 40%, whoever's got the R starts with 40%, mm -hmm. and you're fighting over that remaining 20. But here's why that ground Hi, game Gary. matters. Here, that ground <laughs> game matters, right, yeah, yeah, well, uh, He's what, what's a lot <laughs> you know, when you got when, when you have races like the states we just talked about that are within the margin of error, the ground game really does matter. A really strong gr ground game is worth two to four points. That's the margin in mm -hmm. some of these polls and that Trump we're talking about. Trump is just about. now opening up offices in Florida. Why is he he's just now opening offices big, in Florida? Big, big hoopla over the fact that he's opening 25 offices in Florida this week. The Clinton campaign has had over 50 offices in Florida for months. They've been, they've been investing in those organizers that are out there knocking on doors mm -hmm. and making phone calls and developing one-on-one -on -one relationships with voters. That matters if, if these numbers are right. Well, and if he has, Florida if his are better, close? if his can do twice the work of hers, you know, maybe he'll, he'll make up the <laughs> right, difference. Right, right. I mean, I you know, go. everything I, about him is superhuman. So. <laughs> it's great to see you both. Has anybody here seen Steyerwald got it? Do you see the movie Parenthood? You just have seen it with, with Steve Martin and Diane Weist. And she's got this, or is it Weist? It's Weist. And she's got a, a couple of kids, and one of them is played by Joaquin Phoenix, right? And his name is Gary, and he keeps walking in on her arguments. And every time she sees him, she says, hi, Gary. And that is how I think about Gary Johnson. I'd be, I, I'm going to ask him about it when he comes on the show momentarily. That and Aleppo.